Hello, viewers of Wasteland TV. We are here with Sandy Helberg. What did Sandy Helberg do? I'm an actor and a writer and an autograph signer and a dad and all that stuff. So what movies have you done? I've been in Up the Creek and uh, Hollywood Nights and I've done, uh, actually did a, a small part in the Barbara Streisand Star is Born. Really? Which they wound up cutting and then I heard on the DVD version they put my scene back in, which is nice. And uh, what else have I done? A lot of TV, MASH, uh, Married with Children, New Heart. Um, Were you a regular on any of those shows? No, not on those. I had a series, that, that one down there, in the black and white picture. That was on uh, CBS, Monday nights at 8 o'clock. And it ran three episodes and they canceled it. <laughs> But that was usually the, the running uh, time of a majority of the shows of that era. Back then, yeah, three, four weeks. If you didn't get the ratings, they were yeah. out. You know, then after that, they took time to nurture a show. Even if it didn't do that well. Only the ones they really nurtured were shows that were uh, pilots for big actors. Well, Seinfeld, uh, he wasn't considered big, but his show didn't do well at the beginning. And they changed it a little bit, and they got a new producer. Yeah, that helps out. And, uh, yeah, some, what other show I just saw? But yeah, eventually, they, I did a pilot, uh, uh, I don't know how many years ago, and it didn't get picked up. It was a two-hour pilot. It didn't get picked up, and uh, a year later they called, and they wanted to do another one. But I was already doing a series, and I couldn't, they wouldn't let me out for two weeks. And they did the pilot, and it was Love Boat. Wow, which character were you going to be? Gopher. Oh, wow. I played Gopher. I can show you a picture of him. Yes, uh, please. Uh, so you were Gopher on the original pilot, huh? I had just gotten married, and uh, uh, I didn't have a honeymoon. I asked them, uh, let me find it. I asked them if I could take my wife. They thought I had some balls, you know, take your wife? You just got hired. This is your first job. I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm doing this. So, which was your first movie here out of all your... Uh... Uh, it's not here. The guy brought a poster. It was called Terror in the Wax Museum. And really B movie? C. C? <laughs> it had old time movie stars like Roderick Crawford, John Carradine, Elsa Lanchester. At the end of their careers, huh? Literally at the end of the line. And it was an old horror movie. And so it, uh, I worked on the film as a production assistant. Uh, and I finally convinced the producer to give me a line so I could get my union card. And he did, and I got it. But the best part of it was talking to those actors about Bogart, you know, I sat and talked to Johnny. So you got to talk to the legends, like in Up to Creek, you got to work with the voice actor of Johnny Quest, Tim Matheson. Yes, and Tim and I uh, are good and friends. And Stephen First. Stephen First, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, he just passed away. It's and so then you, then in Hollywood Nights, you worked with a lot of uh, actors what? that went, to, that were, were nobodies at the time, like Tony Danza. Right. Well, he had Taxi, but that was his first movie. Yeah. And but a taxi at that point was he a big big actor at that time? No, he was just known for uh, kind of being a TV actor. Michelle Pfeiffer's first role is, I think, is that film. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, they found her. Uh, well, she had an agent, but she was working in a Vons grocery as a checker. Wow. Yeah. And now she's an Oscar award-winning a Vons racer, iconic actress. You know. Uh, and then you worked at Spaceballs as the doctor. Yeah. Here, this is a picture of me and Mel, and that's me with the beard in History of the World. Oh, you were in History of the World? Yeah. yeah. I've seen that one. I didn't yeah. know you were a part of that one. I saw Spaceballs. Yeah. Uh, actually, I had I had played a different part. Originally, I played Einstein, uh -huh. and so I had a three-hour makeup with the wig and the mustache and the thing, and Mel was playing Sigmund Freud, and someone else was playing... I don't remember who. And our characters were going to be ice skating and singing, you know. And so we shot that. And he called me and said it didn't turn out well. He didn't like it. But he wanted me to be in the film. 
So he had me, he just gave me that part. He said, show up. And uh, so, you know, he's been like that for me. Just called up. Same thing with uh, Spaceballs, you know. I got a part, a doctor, you're a doctor. <laughs> now, what was I going to show you? Oh, Gopher. Oh, Gopher, right. So, out of all your films you made, which one was your favorite to work on? This is from the show New Heart. <laughs> I was teaching Larry Darryl. to get his G. Oh, Daryl. Daryl. No, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl. Daryl, Daryl, and his other brother, Daryl? No, I was teaching Larry. He wanted to get his GED, and I failed him. And so, Bob came to the classroom and he said, he knows all the material. Can you give it to him orally? I said, no. So, then he says, one more thing. He said, he can do it. Can you do it like Jeopardy? <laughs> give him the answer and let him... And that's how I wound up doing it. And then they cut and they cut back and I'm into the game show. Club. Okay, now for 10 points, I'm going to do What is it? No, 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 no. So, that was actually a good show for being so surreal for its day. It was. Yeah, it was. And Nash, you know. Oh, this was the... I, I was telling you about Modern Problems with Chevy Chase. Oh, I didn't know you were in that one. Yeah. Aren't you his buddy in it? No, not at all. No one was his... No, that was Mitch Kreinberg, bald, the bald Jewish guy. Uh, I can't believe I'm showing you pictures. It's like a scrapbook on the phone. It is. That's a neighbor of ours, Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> uh, you still neighbors with Dick Van Dyke? No, we moved up the hill. Oh, okay. And this is someone I had met a couple times and ran into again. And I figured I'll take my picture now. <laughs> uh, now, where is it? I'm sorry. But going back to your films, which one was your favorite one to work on? The one I was working on. You know, I, I love working, and the ones I didn't like, there were a couple of them because there was just a lot of negativity and hostile feelings, and uh, I didn't. Uh, I don't know where that it wasn't a comfortable work setting. No, this was. Other than myself, if you can recognize another guy in there. Uh, Jeff Goldblum? That's what I was thinking, is that Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, he and I went to school together and we've been friends <laughs> ever since. Uh, you still see Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, I had lunch with him a few months ago. Where is that? I'm sorry. Uh, he's had an amazing up and down career. Do you think he's going to go and disappear like a lot of actors and then he reemerges? Here he was doing a play at Lincoln Center. <laughs> He, uh, yeah, you know, he's just had a very slow, steady climb of his career. And that's the best way to have it. It doesn't burn out. Yeah. You know, you're not hot for not for a minute, and then you're gone. I don't know where that is. So are you still acting? Yeah, whenever I can uh, get work. I do a solo show called uh, You Can Only Blame So Much on the Holocaust. Because <laughs> my parents were Holocaust survivors. And I was a year old when we came here, and uh, it was like being in my own Holocaust, because they sent us to Ohio, a small town, <clears throat> all the kids were rednecks, anti-Semitic, and I was a short little guy with a big nose and big ears, and my parents only spoke Yiddish to me, so I had an accent, uh, and it was tough, so they used to rough me up, and I was glad to, to, to move out of there. I finally, after high school, went to New York as soon as I could. Did you go into acting or did you go into starting somewhere else? No, I always else? wanted to do it. Actually, I went into stand-up first because that's what I did at home. It was Richard Lewis. Uh, it was his birthday and he didn't know. <laughs> uh, do you still do stand-up? No, I, I, with this group, uh, the Groundlings, the improvisational group, I was. I was one of the originators. And I liked doing that a lot more instead of because it was uh, you're actually doing a scene you're acting but you're improvising you're it. writing on the spot right and it's not all on you <laughs> it's not all I don't know where those love boat pictures are somebody must have come in and 
cut them out. Anyway, yeah, that was uh, that was one of my first jobs. Was the love boat. So, how was it like to work with Mal Brooks? It's great. It really is great. He uh, he lets you improvise if you know if you can do it, and uh, he knew I could do it. So, so is that why he has a lot of uh, stand-up comedians on his films? Stand-ups are the same people. Yeah, I mean those people are very funny, and they are stand-ups, but uh, they were just funny. You know, funny guy, funny people, and uh, I would never imagine that I was going to get to work with him because as a kid I was such a fan, and a friend of mine was a friend of his, and he came to see me in a Brownling show. He said, "Would you be interested in meeting Mel Brooks?" And I said, "Old guy, what am I going to do with him?" And I said, "Are you kidding?" He said, "No, I'll call you tomorrow." He calls me tomorrow. He says he had a meeting with Mel on Monday in his office. <laughs> And so I go to 20th Century Fox, his office is about this big, you know, and I go in the door and there I see him on the other end of his desk and I'm walking. And I thought, I'm just never going to get there. And I'm telling Mel, I have to stop and rest. And he's laughing, you know, and I get there and I'm breathing heavy and he starts to talk to me and he says, uh, and we talked and I made him laugh and then I was going to leave because I said, what more do I have to do in show business? I made you laugh. He said, sit down, don't be stupid. He said, okay, uh, you came in here, I was going to hire you for a small part, but I'm going to hire you for a bigger part. <laughs> bigger small part. And that was the uh, thing in high anxiety. And then I never auditioned for him, and then he had uh, the other two movies, and they would just call my agent and say, this is what it is, and where you go. And, and like I said, he let me. He also liked, he would call, he would call me to come down and hang out because I loved the people that were, you know, Sheck Green, Ron Carey, Phil, uh, uh, not Phyllis, uh, Boris Leachman, you know, and so I'd come down once in a while and just sit with them and then the night before Richard Pryor was going to work on the movie, he had Richard come down and walk them around the sets and he called me and said, want to come walk with Richard and I? And I said, Again, Richard Pryor. Yeah. So we walked around, and then uh, then on the news that night comes out that Richard Pryor set himself on fire. Yeah, he, he couldn't be in the movie. Which movie was it? That was History of the World. Oh wow! So, so that, he was Gregory Hines' character. Gregory Hines came in at the last minute, and uh, I mean it was such a shock. Here we see him, you know, the night before he's supposed to go to work, and he looked yeah. great. But uh, that happened to him before with Mel. Uh, Richard Pryor co-wrote Blazing Sabbath. Yeah. And he was supposed to play the Cleveland Little part. Was he really? Yeah. I know he was brought on to write all the black roles. No, it was the other way around. And he ended up writing all the right roles. That's right. Mel wrote the black role. But that was Mongo. part of... Right. That was part of the deal that Richard made with Mel. You know, Mel said, look, if you write with us, he said, you'll play the part of... Uh, what was the kid? Waco Kid? Was that uh, uh, Waco Kid was uh, uh, Gene Wilder. Right. He was uh, uh, what's sheriff, the sheriff I right. of uh, Rock Ridge. Right, right. So he said, Al said, absolutely. But uh, Fox, they wouldn't hire Pryor as an actor because of his reputation. And it was too bad. Yeah, but he did have him as a writer, and it's like they brought him in, as, according to the documentary footage, as the black, to write the black character, and he wanted to write all the white characters. Right, right. Like his favorite line, Mongo, <laughs> on an, A Game in Life. Right. That was his favorite right. character to write for, was Mongo. Right. But, yeah, it's too bad, you know, his movie career as an actor was never as good as his stand-up career or his writing career. You know. He was, he was self-destructive when, when he was hot, too high. Right. That was his was big thing. Just brilliant, you know, as a stand-up. So, uh, but it's tough for those guys to transfer it into movies, although he did pretty good with uh, Gene yeah. Wilder. Uh, he worked with Wilder really well as a, as a yeah. straight man. Yeah. You know, because with comedians, if you can find a good straight man with you, you can go a long way. Right, Because right. for some reason, they even, the old block villain and thinking work so well together. Right. But they, uh, neither one were really a straight man, you know, they were both. No comic character. Yeah. But they played straight man to each other when needed. Yeah. But otherwise they were both hysterical. Yeah, they were like tag team wrestlers. Right, right. Yeah. 
So, uh, so yeah, so working with Mel and uh, I work with Jim Brooks, you know, and, uh, and that was not, that was also a bomb, that was a bomb movie. And I happened to be in that one and they wound up cutting out half the movie and uh, I got cut. But, uh, no, there were, you know, I loved doing the show New Heart. They were very nice. How many episodes of New Heart did you do? Two, just two. Same character? No, different character. Uh, the first one, uh, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl were opening a cafe next to the hotel. And they were cooking everything, and they didn't. So I come in, I'm the first customer, and they try everything out on me. And it was great for me. They were throwing shit, and I was ducking, and, you know. Uh, uh, it turned out they were not made to run a cafe. <laughs> but... Uh, so, you know, it was, uh, I, the work is what I love to do, which is why people who become successful and then get lost, like we were talking about, in drugs, I don't get it. To me, the work was the drugs. That's what I love to do. The adrenaline. And got high. To me, the other drug, doing drugs while working would sap your strength. But, but everyone has their own way. Yeah, their own vices, their own ways dealing with right. the Hollywood lifestyle. Right. right, absolutely. But we'll be signing off here. Any okay. last words you'd like to say to the audience of Wasteland TV before we sign off? Yes, those of you who have been thinking about becoming an actor, becoming a writer, becoming a director, don't do it. Go into business with your father. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.